time in Goss's garage, I want to show you some of the inner workings of a modern air conditioning system. Most specifically, how they get the air to come out in the places that you want it to come out. You see, inside a modern air conditioning system, they have doors such as we see over here. Now, if we look at this, this could raise up. And let's suppose that our heater core is below this bottom uh, or behind that bottom opening and the heater core would deliver heat. Up here we have the air conditioning uh, evaporator. So if we want to have uh, all AC, these doors would be pulled down. All of the heat would be shut off. Then if we want to blend heat and air together for a different temperature, these move upward, allowing more heat to blend with the air, uh, with the cold air, and until they get all the way up to the top, and then they close off the air conditioning, and all you have is heat. All right, so how do we control all of that? Well, you have a, a cluster in the middle of the dash, and you push the buttons and set the temperature and so on that you want, then there will be a series of these motors that will be attached to various parts in here. Some of these cars will have dual air conditioning. You'll have a temperature for one side of the car and temperature for the other side. That means those doors would be split and there would be a split in the ductwork so that uh, one side, the door can move independently of the other, and the air is funneled out to each side of the car instead of being combined. It's all done with these little electric motors. Now, down here, a shaft that attaches to one or both of those doors uh, gets turned by the motor based on a signal from the computer that's in the dash. Then, of course, if it's automatic temperature control, you're going to see that they have various sensors in here and so on that take over and sense the temperature. Now, here's a general idea of how these things work. You can see that there are these channels in here. As this motor turns this wheel, what we wind up with is that here we're going to drive something that has a gear on it to make it move. We're going to have something that fits into this one. It's going to be like a little peg that fits into it. And as this gets turned, it changes the position of one of these doors. Here we have just a linear one. So all of these things are controlled by these motors. Now, the problem here is that many of these require that you remove the dash of the car and all of this stuff inside and so on to get to them. It also, in many cases, requires that you have a tool like this, a scan tool, because the scan tool can be connected to the computer interface under the dash, and a good scan tool can activate a lot of these motors, and you can see what the response is. You can see if they work like they're supposed to and so on. So much more complicated than it used to be when you had an old lever that you moved across the dash and it had a cable going to these doors and so on. Now it's all electronic, all controlled by little electric motors, and when it fouls up, well, you probably are going to be looking at a big expense. So. That's basically how modern AC systems distribute air inside the car and control the temperature. And if you have a question, a comment, or just want a lot of great information, check us out at goss-garage.com.